Hey, welcome to this Windows channel and this is another video in the series of checking for privacy and security issues and settings in web browsers. Today we're checking Internet Explorer 11. Now some of these settings are also available in Internet Explorer uh, previous versions 8, 9, 10. But I must warn you, if you're not using Internet Explorer 11, if you're in previous version, you should not be using Internet Explorer. Uh, the last usable and safe version on the web is Internet Explorer 11. If you are behind, choose another browser. If you're on Windows XP, for example, you should not be using Explorer. You should be using Chrome or Firefox. So Internet Explorer 11 is a little complex in its security settings because it has a different feature that other browsers don't have. It's that it's also very much implemented and integrated into Windows. So some of the settings affect more than just the internet and the security of the internet. It also affects the general settings of Windows uh, itself. So you have the settings that you can go get to the tools if you have the menu bar at the top or go into the upper right into the little tools wheel and then just go into internet options. Here you will have uh, scattered all around some of the security settings. First in the general tab, you have the um, browsing history. You can of course delete or change the different settings of deleting files, history and cookies, uh, save passwords and so on. Uh, that, so that's on the main general tab. Then you got the security tab that has the internet uh, level, medium, high, high or uh, medium and uh, these will activate or disactivate some of the settings for security on the web. The default is medium high. You have a default button if you want to. You can also choose a custom level and choose the different uh, way of the behavior basically. Um, here you see all the check marks and all the things that can be done. So for example here file downloads and stuff like that. There's a lot of little security settings here. We won't go too much into this because uh, we'll, we'll spend the full, the full evening, but uh, um, there's a lot of little security settings here, uh, including, you know, use the pop-up blocker, smart screen filter, um, and so on, user data persistence, uh, websites in less privileged web content zones. Uh, so it's, it's very complex in Internet Explorer to really set everything right, and I don't usually... Um, tell people to play too much with these settings uh, because they have implications that are more than just in the uh, Internet Explorer and the Internet itself. You can reset if you've played with settings and things go wrong. You can of course click the reset button and reset it to medium high which is the default. So uh, make sure that you're at the default when you reset here. You have settings also for uh, local internet. That means that these are settings for your local network at work or at home if you share files, for example, in between computers. You have trusted sites and restricted sites that you can add. So if you click uh, trusted sites, it has already a uh, default uh, medium setting. But if you click sites, you can add sites that are going to be trusted. That means these websites can do pretty much anything they want because you trust them. At the same time, you can go to re restricted sites and go to sites and add sites you don't want to have access to. For example, if you see your children go to a website you don't want to, you can add them to the sites that are restricted here and it will block them. But these are very basic settings and there's always a way to kind of, you know, go around them. So it's not necessarily, it's, it's, an easy way to block something, it's an easy way also, there's an easy way to get around it. So when your uh, children get a little more computer uh, technologists, they can of course learn to go around them. Then you have the privacy settings. Privacy settings include settings for websites. So you can uh, specify which sites are or never will be allowed. It's a little bit like the trusted sites and the uh, sites that are blocked that you can of course enter the URL 
and click block or allow depending on what you uh, want to do with that website. You have the little check mark that is not there, which is never allow websites to request your physical location. So if you don't want to have a website checking where you are, you can put a check mark here. But what does it mean? It means that also some websites can't see that you're in a specific place, for example, weather sites. Um, so that is also something that can um, be a problem because now the your favorite weather site might not know where you are to give you the weather. There's the pop-up blocker here. Turn on pop-up blocker and you have settings for the pop-up blocker. There's um, low, medium and high blocking. So depending on where you're going, you can uh, change that. What is nice here is you can also add a uh, websites where uh, you can allow pop-ups. For example, if you go to a website where you uh, click a form that you need to uh, um, fill up every time and you notice that your form is kind of a pop-up every time you click, it will be blocked by the pop-up blocker. So you can add that website, the URL of that website right there and it, it knows that, okay, that website will allow pop-ups only for that site in particular. And of course, you have disable toolbars and extensions when in private browsing starts. In private browsing is a type of browsing where you are kind of in a secure secret mode. So you can go to websites and when you get out of it, nobody knew and nobody knows where you've been. Uh, it's kind of a very private browsing uh, place. Of course, you have the different content settings here. There's the certificates that we don't never play with usually. Uh, there's autocomplete, which has its settings. So you can uh, click and remove the autocomplete of whatever you want. So for example, if you don't want to have usernames and passwords on forms, stuff like that, you can remove the check mark. You can remove the check mark to ask me before saving passwords, like I tell you password saved in browsers is not very secure so it's better not to uh, you can also manage the passwords which sites have passwords and so on and you have delete autocomplete history that means that everything from all the websites that you've kept automatic will be deleted and gone from Internet Explorer if that makes you a little more um, safe also um, you have the possibility to go to the advanced tab on the upper right and in the advanced tab you'll have way down the security and here you have lots of little check marks uh, allow active content from CDs and run on my computer allow active uh, content to run and files on my computer these are uh, first, the first one is CDs. Uh, a long time ago, I don't know, I've not seen any CDs lately that use that feature, but uh, a long time ago, lots of CDs had active content that would work into in the browser itself. So, for example, there were menus and things that you could uh, choose from, and they would activate through Internet Explorer, say. So, this is a check mark to say, well, you can run it automatically or not. Um, allow software to run and install even if the signature is invalid. That's a security risk because if, if the signature is invalid, means it might be it might be just be corrupted because it didn't download right, but it also might be malware. Uh, block unsecured images with other in, um, mixed content. So depending on what's on the web, sometimes you might have seen this. It says, "Oh, there's some secure content or unsecure content that's not shown, or do you want to show it?" Uh, it does happen sometimes when certificates and when websites don't actually carefully check how they are displaying stuff uh, but it also happens when you are infected with malware sometimes so check that out uh, of course lots of little details here not too much time that we'll spend on them but uh, there's a few things that we'll check for example here do not save encrypted pages to disk why encrypted pages might mean there's something or some malware in there um, Empty tempora temporary internet file folder when browser is closed. If you put a check mark here, uh, temporary internet file folder will always be um, emptied every time you stop browsing. Uh, the effect of that is that 
of course, if you went to some websites that had malware that were uh, kind of mixed in the temporary internet files, it means that all the files will be gone. But also, it means that a web browser uh, might take more time to display some web pages sometimes because it won't have a cached copy of a website that is always exactly the same. But with the fast internet we have today, it's less and less of a problem. So, uh, of course, enable smart screen filter. This is good because it tells you when websites are not very good. Uh, enhance protection mode. These are great modes because what they do is they kind of sandbox or lock down Internet Explorer. But the problem is a lot of websites don't work well. That's why the check marks are not there most of the time on these things. So, uh, and of course, here you have warn if changing between secure and not secure mode. So uh, things like that. Warn about certificate address mismatch. These are all you know security features that most web browsers have, but not a lot of browsers have so many options like this to really you know enable or disable these uh, options. And this is where it shows that everything is very very much integrated into Windows with Internet Explorer. And if you decide to play with these settings and so on, well, of course, you have the Restore Advanced Setting button here and the Reset, which is a general reset switch, which brings Internet Explorer back to its original settings. Um, if you ever mess up something while going through these settings. So this was a quick tour, but it you know showed you the basics and uh, the most important features that you can change in Internet Explorer's security and privacy. If you enjoy my videos, why not subscribe to my channel? You'll be informed when new videos are online. If you have any comments, questions, problems, anything you want to know, let us know. We'll try to help you if we can. Give us a thumbs up if you like the videos. Helps us on the ratings on YouTube. By subscribing, of course, you'll know when new videos are online. And we post tons of videos. Thank you for following us, and I hope you're enjoying this series of videos.